So I'm going to show you how to do this trim now, and you have to bear in mind that while I'm doing this, Jeremy's going to be zooming in and out, so you may see just my hands, you may see just my head, you may even see the ceiling, you managed to drop the camera, you never know. Now, the first thing I'll tell you is that, quite obviously, if you were doing this, you'd do this on the flat, you'd do this what before the side seams are joined up, but as I have no sense whatsoever, I've decided to do it on the stand so you can see it as I'm doing it. And also, I've chosen to use some contrasting colours so you can see what I'm doing. As I said before, you will only use the self-coloured uh, thread and fabric to do this trim, otherwise it's going to look terrible. So here is what you do. This trim is called a spiderweb rose, and it's actually used normally in ribbon embroidery, in very delicate little kind of beautiful embroideries. But this is kind of like the hardcore version, this is the big fat chunky version, and it's really easy to do. Here's what you do. There's my thread on a needle. All I'm going to do is do basically a very rough, and I do mean rough, star shape. It has to have five strands to it. You can do seven if you want, but what you want is to have definitely a, a, an uneven number. Otherwise it's not going to work, it's just going to be a real regular kind of rosette and you don't really want to do that. You want, the whole point of it is that it looks like a random pretty rose. So you do this, keep taking it into the centre. And it really doesn't take very long at all. And obviously if you're going to do this, you're going to mark out roughly what size you want your roses to be. But I really am doing this the quick and dirty way just to show you how to do it. So now you've got your, oops, you almost had your five. Think of it as like a starfish formation. That's the easiest way to describe it. So now you've got your five strands. Okay, so that's going to be your framework for your flower. So now it's time to apply our fabric, and I'm doing this in green so you can really see it against the white and against the red thread as well. Um, I've cut this across the stretch so it's got a bit of give, so it gives me a bit more to play with. And as I said before, you can actually edge this or not as you please. The knit is not going to fray, so whatever you like. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Safety pin on the end, start threading it through. And you're going to basically weave it in and out of your stitch marks like this. And I've got a very, very long piece of fabric here, so you have to bear with me. You just want to do it up and down, up and down, so it goes over one and under the next one. And you do this all the way around. And it looks really bizarre at the moment, but trust me, it's going to work. Of course, you can hear the squeaking of our dummy here, protesting wildly. And you'll find as you get round and round, you'll need to pack your fabric down into the centre of it a little bit more. Poor dummy, she really needs some oil on those wheels, never mind. Just pull it through, keep pulling it through, keep pulling it through, keep pulling it through. You can see already the rosette is starting to emerge. It's one of those bizarre things, you don't quite think it can work, but it really, 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 really does. And when it's done, it looks so nice. Now, You've got a number of choices with the edging on this. As I said, you can leave it uncut, unedged, just with your cut edge. You can overlock it, or if you want to, you can do like a very, very fine double turn pin hem. Personally, I would just overlock it for a t-shirt. You can use it on another, fa another fabric, another garment, maybe a blouse or a jacket. You've got a fabric that frays a lot. You're gonna have to make that decision yourself. But really, I think for a t-shirt, overlocking is absolutely perfect. Now when you do this, you'll find that the fabric twists and turns quite merrily. Let it do what it wants. The whole point of this is you get that nice, random, kind of lush rosette look. You don't want some kind of prissy, neat little flowery thing. Now, you can see I've got quite a good rosette there already. That was a real quick, dirty one. It's really not beautiful at all. When you've got to this stage and you've got it as tight as you want it, you can keep going almost, well, I wouldn't say indefinitely, but certainly until your, your stitches can take no more. All you do with the ends is, you just tuck it in underneath and then you'll go to the back of it and you'll do your fixing stitches to make sure, as I said, that you can actually launder this because really you don't want to have to dry clean this, that would be ridiculous. So you can see you've got a beautiful rosette there and even though we use red thread you can barely see, you can only see tiny bits of it there. If I was to do another pass around they would just disappear. So what you do with the ends is once you've finished it, snip it off, tuck it up underneath, little hand stitch there and then go to the back and just do it by hand. And that's it. That's how you do a spiderweb rose. It's the easiest thing in the world. So, once again, I'm going to say to you as always, 
Go and get the pattern, make up some versions, send us some pictures and let's see what you can do.